All right, all right, all right, all right. What's up, Bladensburg High School? How you guys doing? You guys good? If we could talk to the light guy and have him kill the, the house lights, that'd be great, maybe, uh, if we could find that guy. So my name is Ernie G. I'm a Latino comedian from Los Angeles. I'm on a bunch of TV shows nobody watches. Um, <laughs> I'm literally like on three TV shows, I promise you don't watch. I'm on MTV Tres, anybody watch MTV Tres? All four of you, wonderful, all right, cool. <laughs> I'm on Mundos, anybody watch Mundos? Anyone, like two of you, all right, cool. Uh, I started my career with Gabriel Iglesias, you guys know Big Gabriel? Oh, you can just put it right there, that's okay. You can put it right there, you can actually plug it in for me, see my, my charger right there? Yeah, there you go, there you go, awesome, cool. You guys know Gabriel Iglesias, Big Fat Gable, I'm not fat or fluffy, some of you guys know who he is, yeah? All right, so I started my career with him. I was on a show a few years ago, Clap, if you think you might remember, or maybe your parents used to watch, a Latino comedy show called Que Locos. Does anybody remember Que Locos out there? Like, some of you are like, I'm just clapping because I feel bad for you. I feel bad for you. No one knows about the shows you're on, so I feel bad for you. And I just want to say, les pido, la, les pido la disculpe a, a los que no hablan inglés, pero voy a hacer mis chistes en inglés, porque aquí estamos, ¿verdad? Pero yo sé que van a captar el mensaje, lo, lo que estoy diciendo, lo van a captar. I'm going to say my jokes in English, and it's mostly in English with a little Spanish stone in there. For the past 10 years, I've been doing something called empowerment comedy, which is comedy with an inspirational message. I was the keynote speaker at UCLA's Raza graduation a few years ago. Does anybody know about UCLA? Clap if you've ever heard of or know about UCLA. A few of you guys. Uh, you guys know about University of Maryland, right? Do we have a UCLA in Maryland? Any Terp, Terp fans out there? What's up? Yeah? How about Towson? What's up? Towson? Towson? No? UMBCC? And UMBC? UMBC? No? How about PGCC? What's up? PGCC. So we're like, I don't even know what any of that stuff is. <laughs> so every year UCLA has a graduation and then they have a Raza grad for the Latino students. You know, with mariachis and pan dulce, you know how we do it. Hey, oh, pan dulce, oh, hubieran tenido pan dulce para nosotros, wow. They should have had some pan dulce right here for us, huh? I haven't had a concha in a long time, wow. <laughs> Look at some of your faces, what's a concha? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I just want to acknowledge really quick, because I can feel it in the room right now. I just want to acknowledge that I'm going to be saying the word Latino, and I'm going to be saying the word Hispanic pretty often here in the next 45 minutes or so. And when you hear the word Latino, or you hear the word Hispanic, oh, that's great, that's great. And can we kill the house lights? That'd be awesome if we can kill the house lights too. If we hear the word Latino and we hear the word Hispanic and we don't happen to be Latino or Hispanic, there's this kind of underlying assumption that I'm not really speaking to you. I want you to know if you can hear my voice, I'm speaking to each and every one of you. Just like you don't got to be black to love Dave Chappelle, right? You don't got to be black to love you some Kevin Hart. All right, all right, all right, right? You don't got to be Korean to love you some Margaret Cho. You don't have to be Latino to love you some Ernie G. You need two things. You gotta want to love to laugh. If you love to laugh, you're gonna love you some Ernie G. If you want to be inspired, you're gonna love you some Ernie G. So if you love to laugh and you want to be inspired, can I hear you make some noise? Is that everybody in here? That should be everybody. That should be everybody. That should be everybody. So here's the thing. I believe that God's gift to humanity, if we can actually kill the house lights, that would be the best scenario for me. That would be amazing. I believe that God's gift to humanity is when the races mix, when the cultures mix, the children come out gorgeous. Have you noticed that? Whenever the races mix, the children are beautiful. Like you get a black and an Asian, the kids are gorgeous, right? Caucasian and Asian, the kids are gorgeous, right? Anybody in Latino, the kids are gorgeous, right? right? <laughs> You guys are so cute. I feel so bad for my Esau students because I know some of you get what I'm talking about and some of you don't, but trust me, along the course of the next 45 minutes, we're going to get everybody excited. Now listen, I was the keynote speaker at UCLA's Raza grad, so they had 400 students getting their bachelor's degree. 400 Latino kids from all over the country graduating from UCLA. They had over 200 students getting their master's and their PhDs. So 600 Latino students from all over the country graduated from UCLA, and then they had about 5,000 of their family at the graduation, right? Because one of our cousins graduates, the whole family shows up. Huh? I heard there was free pan dulce. Pa donde voy? Pa donde voy? 
I brought the foil in the back to take some to go, let's do this, right? You ever be at a party with your mom, she'd be sneaking chicken in her purse right there, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You'd be like, don't be doing that, mom, that's ghetto. But give me the big piece, give me the big piece. <laughs> you ever complain that your mom does something and then complain she didn't do it for you? <laughs> I mean, don't be doing that. Did you get me some? Did you get me some? <laughs> and what I told those UCLA graduates is the same message I'm delivering here today. It's that it's beautiful that you're here at Bladensburg High School figuring out what it takes to get yourselves into college. Because here's a fact. The day you graduate from college, the day each and every one of you can say, I am a college graduate, you will instantly transform the perception that people have of our community. How many of you know what I mean when I say that when most people in the world hear the word Latino, when most people in the world hear the word Hispanic, or black, or African, or white, or Asian, Certain images pop up into their head as to who they think we are. And I know in your hearts, you tell yourselves, that's not who we are, that's who you think we are. Who we really are, are beautiful, powerful, educated people who contribute to this country. That's who we really are, right? That's who we really are. That's who we are. So the day you graduate from college, you'll be able to say and transform the way people listen. You see, I grew up in Bladensburg and I graduated from UMD. People say, oh, you graduated from college? Oh, 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 oh. I grew up in the hood, maybe. I grew up in Nova. I grew up in Baltimore and I graduated from college. People say, oh, you graduated? Oh, and they'll shift the way that they listen to you. But here's my message. No matter how much education you have, no matter how much money you ever make, no matter how much affluence you attain, if you grew up in El Barrio, if you grew up in the neighborhood, you will always have a little ghetto inside of you, right? <laughs> You'll always have a little ghetto inside of you. Look at some of you went like this. I saw your faces. Some of you went like this. That's right. What's up? And some of you, I saw your faces, some of you were like this. No, stupid dumb, I'm not ghetto. <laughs> I don't mean chunti ghetto like our cousins, okay? See, I have to explain this, this, this joke here because I'm from California, right? I live in Los Angeles, California. I live in Hollywood, not, not in Hollywood, but near Hollywood. So in New Mexico, Arizona, California, Texas, we say this word chunti. Chunti ghetto is like ghetto to the max, you know what I'm saying? Like there's ghetto and then there's chunti ghetto. Like that one cousin we all have, it's like, what eh, I'm ghetto eh, what eh, what eh, what eh. What's my name, what's my name? You can't read? You can't read my name right there? You can't read that? <laughs> oh, where do I live? I live right there, I live right there. <laughs> I don't mean chunti ghetto, I mean ghetto fabulous. Clap if you know what I mean by ghetto fabulous. Come on, clap, most of you, most of you know what I mean. Okay. I love being here in Bladenburg. I've never been here in my life, right? And I was asking some of the students, where do you guys go for Mexican food? And they're like, oh dude, Taco Bell, dude, for sure, Taco Bell. I'm like, no, 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 like authentic Mexican food with like real corn tortillas. They're like, oh my God, dude, Chipotle, dude, totally Chipotle. <laughs> I'm like, no, dude, I'm from California. In California, we have these taqueros, right? These taco trucks. And the taqueros, you know, they chop up the meat and they put it in a little tortilla, right? Like behind a car wash in an alley somewhere or something, right? And here's the thing, I'm gonna educate you guys on a little Mexican flavor, okay? If you're an authentic Mexican taqueria, an authentic Mexican taqueria, the taqueros, the guys that make the tacos, have figured out that you gotta make the taco with two corn tortillas. I don't know if you noticed that, two little corn tortillas. Why? Because if you make the taco with just one corn tortilla, you cannot do the very traditional pinch, lift, tilt, insert method, right? Now, <laughs> look at half of you went like this. Oh my gosh, I do that. I didn't realize I do that, but I do that. See, when you grow up around certain customs, you just pick up what all your friends were doing, and one of them, if you're around Mexicans, is pinch, lift, tilt, insert, right? Have you ever seen a non-Latino eat a plate of tacos? <laughs> Non-Latinos are like, uh, what do I do? I go, just pick them up and eat them. They're like, can I get a fork and a knife? <laughs> like, no, dude, just pick them up and eat them. And my buddy, blonde hair, blue-eyed Craig, blonde, like, 
gringo hasta las cachas, right? <laughs> If you don't know what that means, too bad. Uh, no, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. My, my white buddy, Craig, blonde hair, blue eyed Craig, I go, just pick him up. He's like, okay, just pick it up. Okay, let's see. How do I? He, he like cupped the taco. I go, what are you doing, dude? You don't cup the taco, dude. You pinch, lift, tilt, and serve, right? <laughs> and, and he's, there's a lot of customs that like we grow up, like, if, like Latinos, we like sopa, right? Or caldo. Right? And when we're at our abuelita's house, our grandma's house, we like putting oregano in our caldo or in our sopa. But oregano usually comes in the same container as the Parmesan cheese at the Italian restaurants, right? Latinos, we don't have that kind of patience, you know what I mean? Like, have you ever seen a non-Latino put oregano on their pasta? You guys are so patient, they're like, it's barely coming out. It's hardly even, is this thing plugged up? It's not even coming out. Latinos, we don't have that time. We don't have time for that. What do we do? We unscrew the thing, we pour it in our hands, and then we go like that, right? We use our hands like grinders. <laughs> and then, of course, we never wash our hands when we're done eating, right? So we'll be going to church on Sundays, <laughs> giving blessings to people. <laughs> May peace be with you and also with you. May peace be with you. And the pobrecita señora is like, Oh, marihuanero, wow, oh, wow. He smokes the marijuana, boy. Let's see that to familia, eh? I'm gonna tell your family, watch what happens. They're like, no, 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 senora. I say no to drugs. I say no to drugs. It's oregano, te lo juro. <laughs> She's like, uh huh, I see too, oregano, whatever, right? But if you've ever had a taco with just one corn tortilla, the juice from the meat usually cracks that tortilla in half. And you do pinch, lift, till, and the meat's still on the plate, right? So most authentic taquerias have figured this out. So when you go to a taco truck, you get a taco with two corn tortillas. So you can do pinch, lift, till, and insert. But Latinos, we like to save money at all costs, right? So when we go to a taco truck, do we order four tacos or six tacos? No, we order two tacos, and then we separate each of the tortillas and make four tacos, right? <laughs> we spread the meat around. You always end up with that one taco, didn't get enough meat. It's like a cilantro taco. <laughs> All right, see, the ghetto just popped out of half of you, see? See, I can tell you, like, no, stupid, we're not ghetto, okay? Listen, just notice that when I first said that word ghetto, for most of us, a negative connotation pops in our head. You hear the word ghetto, you think negatively. Well, I'm here to ask why. Why is it that we automatically associate certain negative stereotypes to that word ghetto? If I'm from what people consider to be the ghetto, if I'm from what people consider to be the barrio or the hood or the neighborhood, but I'm a good person and I come from a good family and I go to college and I graduate from college and now I'm making a positive impact on my community, then how can the ghetto be bad? Maybe, just maybe, we need to reevaluate the way we use these words to describe ourselves and describe our communities and maybe, just maybe, take pride in the fact that we have a little ghetto in us. I'm proud of the fact that I'm a beautiful, powerful, educated Latino man who has a little ghetto in him. I'm proud of that fact, okay? I'm proud of that. I'm proud of that. And I can tell some of you are feeling me. And some of you are looking at me going, but we're not ghetto though, okay? We have worked too darn hard to still be ghetto, Ernie. <laughs> we are trying to get out of the ghetto. <laughs> Maybe not. If you don't like that word ghetto, replace it for survivor. Because trust me, if you're a student here at Bladensburg High School, doing what you got to do, and some, a lot of y'all don't speak English that well, and you're trying to learn English and trying to go to school, I promise you, you have done what you can do to become a survivor. So if you don't like that word ghetto, you are definitely a survivor. But as far as I'm concerned, if you're in the ghetto, you get two. If you're in the ghetto, you get to be street smart and book smart. If you're in the ghetto, you get to know what time it is in the classroom and in the hood. If you're in the ghetto, you get to be proud of your education and of your culture. So if you have a little ghetto in you, can I hear you make some noise? A little ghetto in you, some of you, some of you, some of you. All right, some of you are feeling me. I can tell some of you are feeling me and some of you are going, but we're not ghetto though, eh? So watch, here's the ultimate test. Stay with me, stay with me, y'all. Here's the ultimate test if you think you might have a little ghetto inside of you. When you run out of shampoo, do you throw the bottle away? No, you pour the water inside, shake it, pour it on your head, right? Right? Everybody does that. 
Even the teachers are like, we do that too, we do that too. That's actually not being ghetto, that's being thrifty. <laughs> there's ghetto and there's thrifty, and that's definitely thrifty. <laughs> <laughs> But those of you a little bit of money, you guys fill that ball up the whole way one time. Shake it, pour it on your head, then throw that thing away. <laughs> That's being a waster, dude. <laughs> Not us, Latinos and black kids, we filling up a third of the way, huh? Because that soapy water, that's like three shampoos in one right there. <laughs> you fill it up a third of the way, shake it, put some on your head, then you put that thing back. <laughs> then the next day you go in there, you get the shampoo bottle, you open it, you squeeze it on your head. <laughs> that soapy water's cold. <laughs> that water's cold. <laughs> okay, only the really ghetto kids are laughing now, dude. <laughs> then finally the laugh. <laughs> Look at then finally the last thing you go in there, you get the shampoo bottle, you open it, you squeeze it on your head, nothing comes out, you're like, shoot, what do I do now? Like the good ghetto person that you are, you wrap a towel around your waist, go to the kitchen and get palm olive dishwashing liquid, baby. <laughs> Heck yeah! <laughs> Look at half of your faces, half of your faces are like this. You crossed the line on that one, mister, you crossed the line on that one. You kind of had me for a second there, but you lost me on that one, dog. Suave is 99 cents, mister. <laughs> Don't they got a 99 cent store by where you live, mister? <laughs> Clap if you like the 99 cent store, don't lie. The Dollar Tree, the family dollar. <laughs> I love the 99 cent store. I just don't like being caught there, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you see your friends, you're like, oh, hide fool, hide fool. They're gonna think we're broke, dog. They're gonna think we're broke. <laughs> they saw me, did they see me? Dude, I'm just here for milk, eggs, and batteries. That's it, dude. For food, we go to Fiesta Food. Dale gas, <laughs> But these are the same jokes I did at UCLA's Raza graduation. And what was beautiful to me was the audience was laughing. I'm a comedian, I do jokes for laughs. But what was even more important to me, more poignant, was that after the show, there was a big long line of people to come talk to me. And the line was filled with tias and tios, primos and cousins, grandmas and grandpas, abuelitas and all. You okay, bro? <laughs> He's so funny. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I appreciate that, bro. I appreciate you, brother. But every, when you did that, like 40 eyes just looked at you, dude. It's all good. Thank you, man. I know you're trying to get people to listen. You're like, y'all need to pay attention. <laughs> and then 40 eyes are like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, bro. I appreciate it, man. But I'm cool. I, I, I can control the crowd. Um, here's the thing. I was... A, this is the same jokes I did at UCLA's Raza grad, right? And there was a big long line of people to come talk to me. And the line was filled with tias and tios and primos and cousins and abuelitas and abuelitos coming up to me to say thank you. Thank you for not only celebrating our child's accomplishment by graduating from UCLA, which all of you can do, but thank you for not letting them forget who we are, quienes somos. Thank you for that. And thank you for reminding us about the obstacles we had to overcome to get them to even go to UCLA. I said, wow, there's something beautiful about embracing every piece of who we are. And that's one of my messages. You gotta love and embrace every piece of who you are, including the ghetto within. And if you don't like that word ghetto, replace it for survivor. Survivor, every one of you is a survivor. See, I grew up just north of East LA, a little neighbor called Highland Park. I love being Latino. People always ask me what's a G for, Ernie G. Is it Garcia, Gutierrez, Gonzalez? My full name is Ernesto Tomas Grichevsky. <laughs> Messed you up with that one, huh? I thought you were Latino, stupid. I'm a Mexican, American, Puerto Rican, Russian, and French Catholic Jew. I am this country, gosh darn it. <laughs> My mom's from Mexico, born and raised in El DF, Chilanga, hasta las cachas, wey. If you don't know what that means, too bad. <laughs> no, it just means she's Mexican through and through, all the way down to her pistol holders. He can't wait. <laughs> My dad's Puerto Rican, so I'm mostly Mexican. Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> Have you ever noticed Puerto Ricans are arrogant salsa dancers? You ever notice that? Puerto Ricans, Cubans, and Dominicans dance salsa like, I know I look good, I know I look good. <laughs> you wish you looked like me, but you don't. I know I look good. <laughs> Mexicans and Salvadoreños, we love dancing salsa, but we end up mixing salsa with cumbia. <laughs> we look like we're dancing the chicken dance. Ta -da 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 -da, ta -da 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 ta -da 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 <laughs> hey, look at the fulano. The fulano right here is like, I love the chicken dance, bro. <laughs> What's up, Mexico? Que viva Mexico. All right, cool. 
Listen guys, I grew up just north of East LA, a little neighbor called Highland Park. Now, I don't know what Bladensburg is like. I don't know if they have a cholo problem here, a lot of bandillas around here, a lot of gang problems. But it's weird, when you grow up around gangs, you don't really fear them, you know what I mean? They're just part of the neighborhood, you know what I'm saying? Like clap if you grew up with gangs in your neighborhood or at least next door in a different neighborhood, but you grew up with gangs in your neighborhood. Clap if you're in that category. A lot of you guys, all right, good, good. And if you didn't clap right now, you're still gonna appreciate what I'm about to say. I grew up in one of the, like, the most dangerous neighborhoods in LA. It's called Highland Park. Now, when you grow up around Cholos, you gotta be careful because a lot of times, the media is always gonna try to get you to fear your own people. Like right now, if a bunch of Cholos walked in right now, was just walked in here, some of you'd be like, oh, security, what's going on, security? Oh my God, security, right? But if a bunch of Cholos walked in, I'd be like, all right, cool, I got back up, we're straight, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Anything goes down, I gotta ride home, at least, you know? Not in a car, on a bike, but at least I gotta ride home, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> But it's weird, like when you listen to the news, you listen to what's on TV about gangs, it's gonna make you fear your own people. Like, have you guys ever seen that show on the History Channel called Gangland? Anybody ever seen Gangland before? A few of you guys have? All right, there's a show that talks about the gangs, like the real gangs, and I was watching it one time. And they're all, some of the most notorious of all of LA's gangs comes from the small Mexican American community of Highland Park, where the avenues run the streets. I'm like, that's where I live. <laughs> It's dangerous right here. I didn't know. Go to the store to buy some milk. I can't, I might get shot. <laughs> and it's weird too, right? Now listen, if you're involved in illegal activity, then yes, we need to be careful and watch out. But a lot of times, little wannabe gangsters are just little dudes that didn't play football. You know what I'm saying? Everyone wants to be on a team. <laughs> they didn't play football or soccer, so they joined a gang. You know what I'm saying? And it's weird, they can't kick a ball or throw a ball, so they steal a ball and end up in a gang, you know what I'm saying, dude? <laughs> it's weird because if, if you're involved in illegal activity, we need to stay away, but my heart goes out to all these little wannabe cholos sometimes because, you know, it's like all these people think all these horrible things and people are people. You listen to the news, the news is like some of the most notorious of LA's criminals, some of the most notorious of LA's gangsters. I'm like, notorious criminals? No, it's not. It's my cousin Nacho and his homies right there. <laughs> he's not notorious for nothing, that guy. The only thing he's notorious for is not having a job and eating my mom's food all the time, man. If you're gonna come over and eat, bring some tortillas or pupusas or something, dude, right? When I was a kid, I wanted to be a cholo bad, dude. I did. You guys all seen that movie, Grease? Every, everybody seen Grease? Some of you guys have seen Grease? Some of you haven't. I got chills, they're multiplying. And I'm losing control. Look at the girls want to go. You're the one that I want. <laughs> <laughs> Darling, the one that I want. <laughs> Look at some of your faces. Oh my gosh, they always, they always sing that one at karaoke. All right, remember the drag races in Greece? Remember when those cars raced in Greece? That was along the LA River. Now the LA River is not really a river. It's just a bunch of cement with a stream of water in the middle of it. But between the LA River and Dodger Stadium, where the Dodgers play baseball, that's where I grew up. The Cholos are on that part of town, they're called Frog Town. That's the name of their gang, Frog Town. On the other side of the LA River, by General Hospital, a lot of your parents watch that soap opera, General Hospital. The Cholos are on that part of town, they're called Dog Town. And when I was a kid, Frog Town and Dog Town didn't get along. I never understood that growing up. I'm like, we're all Latinos, why don't we get along? They said, cross the river, see what happens. <laughs> I said, I ain't going over there, dude. Those Dogtown dudes were bad. Dogtown dudes walk around the neighborhood intimidating people. Dogtown fool, what's up? Woo woo! <laughs> Dogtown fool, what's up? Woo woo! I was like, ay perro. <laughs> I couldn't imagine what they were saying on the other side of the river. Frogtown fool, rivet. <laughs> rivet, rivet. <laughs> Don't make me get my rivet on, dog. I was like, ay pobrecitos. All I knew was Frogtown and Dogtown didn't get along. When I was a kid, I wanted to go watch them rumble. Because whenever they were going to throw down, waffle, 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 waffle. Look at some of their faces. Oh my gosh, he fights like my tío, eh? Look at him. <laughs> whenever they were going to throw down, there was going to be a rumble. A rumble at the river. There's going to be a rumble at the river. Shut up, fool, let's go. And there was something about it that was exciting. You could feel it in my neighborhood when something was gonna go down. 
You know, the lights would go down, they'd shut the windows. My grandma would stick her head out the door. Ya metanse, babosos! <laughs> that means get inside, slobbering idiots. <laughs> okay, I love the word baboso because it sounds like you're cursing in Spanish, but you're not. Baboso just means slobbering idiot. That's all it means, okay? Remember when you were a kid, you would cry so hard that you couldn't even breathe? You remember that? Your mom would hit you, you'd be like, You remember that? And you'd have saliva hanging from your mouth right there. And all your cousins would be going, right? Well, the saliva is called babas. And if that's ever happened to you, you're a baboso, okay? My grandmother's sticker, ya metanse babosos. And it was scary because you could feel it in the neighborhood. Something was going to go down. There was going to be a rumble at the river. But back in the day, these cholos, they didn't have cars to go to the rumbles. They used to go on their huffy bikes. We're going to get these fools, eh? We're going to get them, dog. We're going to get them, fool. Look at that one dude. He couldn't afford a bike. He just had a skateboard and a rope. So now, fool. So now! Don't turn, dog. Don't turn! The dude on the handlebars said, because the policia, fool, go, dog. <laughs> And when you're a cholo on the way to a rumble, you gotta be hard, right? You gotta represent. You can't stop your bike with a handbrake. Ding, 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 ding. How do we stop our bikes back in the day? With the heel of our shoe. <laughs> We're gonna get these fools, eh? Que onda's way? I was like, yeah, I wanna be one of these dudes. These dudes are bad. And then my mom found the comb in my pants. You know what comb I'm talking about? That round plastic cholo comb, you slide your finger in like that? You guys know what I'm talking about? You guys ever seen one? You have one in your pocket right now, Hafu. Don't lie, don't lie. 99 cents are right there, Hafu. Look at this guy. No soy cholo, de veras. No soy cholo, de veras. Te lo juro, I'm not a cholo. I know, I know, you know. I used to hide my gangster paraphernalia from my mom, my bandanas, and my cholo combs. But I forgot my cholo comb in my pocket, and my mom was doing laundry. And she saw it. ¿Qué es esto? What is this? My son wants to be a cholo. Mi hijo quiere ser chala. Ernesto, vente pa acá, vente pa acá, Ernesto. You get your butt over here, mister. I am going to show you what cholos feel like. Dude, I was scared, boy. I ran, I stood at attention. She put that cholo comb on, she was like, pow! I had indentations on my face for a week. <laughs> Turns out I was more afraid of my mom than I was the cholos, dude. I used to get protection from the cholos, from my mom, fool. See, the cholos, they beat you up once to get you into the gang, right? My mom beat me up every day. <laughs> my mom was always trying to teach me lessons, you know what I'm saying? Anybody else get a lesson teaching from their mama? Look, like, nobody wants to admit it. No, not us. No, no. Not Bladensburg. No, 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 no. Right? My mom was always trying to teach me lessons, and I was really good at blocking her teachings. <laughs> My mama trying to teach me something. Pow! I block it. Boom! <laughs> Safe. She got mad when I blocked it because I got good with it. She'd be all pa pa pa. I'd be all pa pa ping. <laughs> I got all Kung Fu Panda on my mom right there. She got so flustered because I got good at blocking it. She came up with an alternative way of teaching me lessons. <laughs> my mom developed a sneak. Anybody's mom do the sneak? <laughs> Real fast. <laughs> you ever be hanging out with your friends and she comes up from behind you? Like, I didn't even see that one coming. You gotta give me a warning at least. Cause when you warn me, I can clinch. I didn't even get to clinch up or nothing. When you warn me, I could clinch. It doesn't hurt as much. You got me all loosey-goosey on that one. That's not fair. You go to school to tell your friends, 
You want your friends to feel sorry for you. <laughs> you want them to console you. You want to go, dude, mama. You know, you know what's so funny, dude? <laughs> I can see your faces. I'll be like, oh my gosh, that happened to me. <laughs> Hilarious, dude. Do you ever get chased by your mom or dad? No, 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 she gets her chancla. You'd be like, Psh, ah, you missed. <laughs> you can't find your shoe. Oh, you found it. <laughs> she gets her other chancla. You'd be like, Psh, ah, you missed. <laughs> you only got two shoes. <laughs> oh, where'd that one come from? You can't have three shoes. That's not fair. Go to school to tell your friend. There might be a bell that rings right now, but don't stay. Everyone stay here. I got you until about three o'clock, okay? Uh, be like, that's not fair. Go to school to tell your friends. You want your friends to feel sorry for you, huh? You want them to console you. You want to go, dude, my mom hit me with the chancla. You want your friends to go, no way, really? That's messed up. Not a BHS, huh? Shoot, you come to our high school, you'd be like, dude, my mom hit me with the chancla. What do your friends say? Fool, that ain't nothing. You know what my mom did to me? She sold me out, dude. She told my daddy, pulled out the cinto, way. The cinturon. The bell, and not the little skinny ones from Walmart. No, no, no. The big, fat, thick ones from Tijuana. <laughs> or Salvador. Honduras. <laughs> and with the matching botas y todo. <laughs> bailamos con el tucan, bailamos con el nazo, bailamos con el tuca, 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 nazo. <laughs> Look at some of the girls are like, oh my gosh, they played it at my quinceañera. <laughs> And look at the other girls are like, I never got a quinceanera. I want a quinceanera. <laughs> so cute, man. You ever get too old to be getting a lesson? <laughs> you're 12 and you're taller than your mom. <laughs> Did that happen to anyone? When I was 12, I outgrew my mom, dude. And she went like this one time. All I did was stand up. <laughs> My mom went, I, 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 I. I said, no, 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 I'm not going to do nothing to you. Just don't do it to me no more. Ya no me pegues, okay, mama? Please don't hit me no more. My mom was like, no me hablas así, baboso. No me hablas, dame tu cara aquí, tu cara aquí. You know my mom's weapon of choice was? Her teaching stick. A long yellow plastic wiffle ball bat. A plastic baseball bat. I can hear that thing coming. Vroom, pow! I could time it because of the wind. Vroom, pow! One time she missed, it went like this. Vroom. <laughs> My mom was right there. Zing, 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 zing. Vente pa ca, vamos. Zoom, zoom. My mom was like the Latina Darth Vader with that thing. <laughs> zoom, zoom, zoom. Come over to the dark side, Ernesto. I am your mother. Oh my God, you know what's so cute too? <laughs> you ever talk back to your parents? <laughs> you don't want to be Latino or black and talk back to your mama, huh? You don't want to be anybody talk back to your mama. Because after a while, your mom doesn't have to touch you, huh? She just gives you the look. You know that look? Ooh. Sometimes that look is worse than the touch, huh? The touch, you know what's coming. That look, you don't know what's coming. <laughs> You ever be at a party with your family? You're like, hey, cuz, you want to see my mom get mad right now? Come here, dude. <laughs> She's gonna get so mad, dude. You think my mom's nice? She's not nice. Then you go do that thing you know you're not supposed to do. Your mom doesn't have to touch you, huh? She just goes. <laughs> Look, if you can finish this sentence, please finish it. Bas, a ver. <laughs> Look at some of the Latino kids. Stop it, mister. I'm tingling already. Stop it, right? You know what? So, you know, one time, dude, you, you ever talk back to your parents? Heck no. One time my mom went like that. I went, stop it. I'm going to call the police on you. You know what my mom said? You know what she said? She said, good. Call the police. I'm going to do this in front of them. So everyone in this neighborhood knows what kind of a boy I have in this house. I said, damn, mama, you bad, mama. 
I said, where are you from? Mama, where are you from? She said, don't worry about it. I'm from nowhere. <laughs> and you know what's beautiful? I'm looking at your faces. And at least half of you, 50% of you are sitting there cracking up going, oh my gosh, that happened to me. <laughs> but there's a good 50% of you and a lot of the teachers in the back and on the side who are staring at me right now with like a stone cold look on their face. And I know a lot of them are thinking to themselves, oh my gosh, did that really happen to these people? Oh my gosh, you guys, that is not okay. Under no circumstances is that ever okay. You guys, we are at Bladenburg High School. We have counselors available for you. We can write you a referral note. You guys do not need hits, you need hugs. All we ever got in my house was a time out. <laughs> I would have loved the time out when I was a kid, man. I didn't get time outs for being disciplined. My mom would have been teaching me lessons. Time out, time out! Yeah, yeah, my mom would have gone, okay, Baboso, go. Time out. 28, 29, 30, time in. Pass! I share this with you for one reason and one reason only. I am not up here condoning corporal punishment, okay? I'm not saying it's cool that our parents did that to us. I am saying this. The only reason our parents ever did that to us is that's what our grandparents did to them. You do what you're taught. If you're taught by the hand, you teach by the hand. If you're taught with love, then you teach with love. That ended up being the greatest gift my mother ever gave me. To have me respect her more than I did the streets. The streets wanted me. There was a pull. I wanted to be a cholo bad. I wanted to get a spider tattoo, a teardrop tattoo, three dots for me. Vida loca y que wey. But I was literally more afraid of my mom than I was the cholos in the hood. Had I listened to the cholos in the hood, I would have ended up dead or in jail. I listened to my mama, I ended up being a college graduate. So I thank my mama every day for loving me that much. Thank you, mama. Thank you. Thank you, mama. And that's my message here today. Your parents are the reason you get to be who you are today. Your parents are the reason you get to go to Bladensburg High School. You get to take Esau classes. Now I apologize, lo siento, a los que no me entendieron mucho, pero sí captaron el mensaje, ¿verdad? The beautiful message that I'm trying to deliver here is that you are all beautiful, powerful, educated young people, and your job is to be grateful to your parents for the opportunities that they've given you. If you love your mama and you love your daddy, then do well in school. For those of you who aren't getting good grades, I'd like you to consider it's because you're mad at your mom or mad at your dad. You wanna show your parents that they messed up? Be a mess up. You wanna show your parents that they did good, that all their hard work and sacrifice for us was worth something, then kill it and do good in school. Do well in school. Trust your teachers. Look, I, I, I gotta wrap this up. I'm gonna say this. When it was time for me to go to college, or excuse me, high school, the teachers were telling the parents of the black and Latino kids. This is what the teachers were telling the parents of the black and brown kids. Since your child's probably not gonna go to college, they should learn to work with their hands, mechanics, electronics, woodcraft. Gardening would be wonderful for your child since they're probably not gonna go to college. The rich kids, they got encouraged to St. Francis College Prep. What did that mean? It wasn't even a high school, it was a place where you were prepared to go to college. The brown kids, trade tech, the rich kids, college prep. Now if you're sitting there thinking, hey, my dad went to a trade tech, my brother went to a trade tech, I might go to a trade tech. Trade tech is where they teach you a skill. There's nothing wrong with that. That's a beautiful option if you don't want to go to college. But I'm encouraging all of you to go for the stars. You know in your heart that you're beautiful, powerful, educated person. Just because you don't speak English has nothing to do with your intelligence. English comprehension has nothing to do with intelligence. I have you for 10 more minutes, guys. I, we, we made an arrangement. I have you for 10 more minutes. English comprehension. I met a girl at T.C. Williams. She came over here from Honduras. And she said, I want the people to know 
that just because I don't speak English does not mean I am not intelligent. I am AP student in Honduras. I take AP cal calculus, AP chemistry, AP algebra, and I come here and because I don't speak English, people think I am not AP. English comprehension has nothing to do with how intelligent I am. I am learning language as a, English as a second language. I said, wow, mija, you go, girl. You tell people who you are. Just because you're having a hard time with English doesn't mean you're not beautiful, powerful, and educated people. For me, my mom said no. If those kids can go to St. Francis, me va ir a St. Francis. So I went to St. Francis College Prep, all boys Catholic high school. Habían tres Latinos in my freshman class. There were three Latino kids in my freshman class. It was a bunch of rich gringos and Asians and Indians. Three Latinos. Steve Gomez, my boy, cool dude. Then there was me, Ernesto Grichevsky. <laughs> and then there was a guy named Juan Garcia, right? Now here's the thing. I'm just going to skip to this because I want you guys to get the message. In high school, I met my guidance counselor, Miss Donna Huckabee. Miss Donna Huckabee is that one teacher, mentor, or coach that looks at you in your heart, looks at you in your eyes, and says something to you you didn't even know about yourself. How many of you guys have ever had a mentor, teacher, or coach say something in your face and in your heart you go like this? How do you know? You don't know me. You know that feeling? Don't talk to me all comfortable. You don't know my life. That was Miss Donna Huckabee. She said, You're a leader. People love you because you're funny. Where are you going to go to college? I said, I don't know. Where'd you go? You know when someone's trying to love you a little too much and they get up in your face, hey, sweetheart, how you doing? Where are you going to go to college? I don't know. Where'd you go? She said, can we, that's killing me. Can we turn off the speakers? Thanks. Um, she said, where are you going to go to college? I said, Loyola Marymount University. I said, where did you go? She said, Loyola Marymount University. I said, then I'll go there. Because of the love of Miss Donna Huckabee, because of the love of one lady, I got into Loyola Marymount, became the first person in my family ever to go to college right after high school. How many of you, when you graduate college, will be the first in your family to go to college? How many of you guys are in that category? Give them some love. That's an amazing feat. Please give them some love. Why do cholos and gangsters become cholos and gangsters? Because somebody influenced them too. Why do young people become college graduates? Because somebody influenced them too. Now listen, I went to college. Last little story guys, five more minutes and I'm gonna let you go. I went to college and what happened? I got scared. I started drinking, I started partying, I started hanging out and I got put on academic probation. You know what that means? You got to get a C average to stay in school. You got a C minus, they kick you out. Now I manage the basketball program at Loyola Marymount. Any basketball fans out there? Any guy, anybody have any basketball fans? All right, if you're a basketball fan, you'll love this story. If you're not, you'll still like it. I manage the highest scoring basketball game in the history of NCAA Division I basketball. Loyola Marymount University, my school, beat U.S. International 181 to 150. Why do I share that with you? Because our leading rebounder and our leading scorer was this guy named Hank Gathers. Hank Gathers led the country in rebounding and in scoring. Why do I share that with you? Because my parents were never married. I am the result of a noche divertida. <laughs> my dad went salsa dancing, nine months later, boom, Ernie G. And I used to not tell people that. But I had some cholo come up to me after the show. He said, hey Holmes, can I talk to you for a second, dog? I said, what did I say, dude, what did I say? He said, no, 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 te quiero dar mucho respeto, Holmes. I can't believe you put yourself on blast like that, homie. I'm like, what do you mean, dog? He said, my parents were never married either. And until I heard you speak just now, my whole life, I thought it was a mistake. But after listening to you, I realized, maybe I'm not. I said, God doesn't make mistakes, bro. Your job is to figure out why God put you on this planet and give your life over to that. He said, mucho respeto, Holmes. So I let people know. When I met Hank Gathers, the strongest man I've ever met in my life, I went, yo, Hank, my name's Ernie, I'm the manager of the basketball team. He said, hook up some towels, yo. Trying to clown me, right? I said, no, no, I'm trying to tell you, dude, I'm the manager of the basketball team, so I want to introduce myself. He said, hook up some towels, youngin. He was from the projects in Philly. He didn't know I was from north of East LA, Highland Park, he didn't know that. I said, hey, dog, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. He said, all right, then come on. He threw the ball at me. We started shagging. Pow, we became boys. To this day, I still have Hank Gather size 13 Reeboks, his number 44 practice jersey, and his Loyola Marymount hoodie. Why? 
Because in March of 1990, the most powerful man I'd ever met in my life went up for an alley-oop dunk, dunked the basketball, had a heart attack on the court, and died. The most powerful man I'd ever met in my life was gone in an instant. When bad things happen, we make bad choices, and we think it's okay to make bad choices. I started drinking, started partying, got put on academic probation, and I got kicked out of Loyola Marymount. First person in my family to go to college to becoming another Latino statistic, a dropout. And I went home and my mom was like, what are you doing here? I said, they kicked me out of school. She said, no, they didn't. You go back and you tell them how you want to go back. I said, I can't, they kicked me out. She said, mijo, I came over here from Mexico when I was nine years old and all I've ever wanted was for you to get your education. You go back and you beg them, you tell them you want to go back. I said, I can't, they kicked me out. Déjame en paz. Went to my bed, pulled the blankets over my head and knocked out. You think I slept for three days this time? Oh, no, no, no. Not at my mama's house. 5 a.m. the next morning. Be good for something. Take out the trash. I get the trash. I walk outside. My foot hits the pavement. Goosh, it starts raining. I fell to the floor. I was holding trash and it was raining on me. I started thinking about my life. I had gotten kicked out of Loyola Marymount University. I owed them $26,000 in student loans and didn't even graduate. I got arrested for drunk driving, the state of California versus Ernesto Grichevsky. I owed people money, I broke up with my girl, my girl broke up with me, I didn't have a car, I didn't have a job, I was back at home, I was sitting on the floor, I was holding trash, and it was raining on me. I've never been addicted to alcohol or drugs, thank God, but that was my rock bottom. I hit rock bottom. I looked up and I was like, what do you want from me? What do you want from me? Now three days later, my tia got sick. Now my tia, my aunt, is that one tia we all have, like Christmas is always at your tia's house, Thanksgiving's always at your tia's house. If you're ever hungry, there's a pot of beans or frijoles at your tia's house, right? I called her, I said, tia, are you okay? She said, no mijo, there's something wrong with my blood. I said, can I come visit you? She said, your mom's really mad at you right now. I said, tia, I wanna come see you. She said, quédate con tu mamá. Stay with your mom. I'll never stop regretting that I didn't go visit my aunt. Why? The next day my cousin called. She's dead, cuz. I said, what did you say? My mom rose, your aunt Rosa Maria, she's dead. I said, no, no! I got the phone and I threw it. Cuz! I ran down the street. No, no, why? And in that moment, Ms. Donna Huckabee, my guidance counselor, popped into my head. She said, everybody knows that rage. Everyone has felt that anger. When you feel that rage and that anger, don't take it out on people. Don't take it out on things. Get yourself a pen and a pad and write your feelings out onto the page. I went to the beach, I got a yellow pad and a pen. I started writing, what is the point of life? Who cares about study or school or any of it? When you can just take people from us, Hank Gathers is dead. And then you took my Thea. How could you take my Thea? She was the most beautiful woman on the planet. She walked with the grace and dignity of an angel. Anybody who ever met my Thea loved her. I'm going to miss you, Thea. Rest in peace, Thea. I love you. And all that rage turned to so much love. And I went to her funeral. And at her funeral, the priest was saying a few words, but he didn't know my Thea. He was saying stuff like, I'm sure Rose was a lovely lady. I'm sure Rose was a wonderful person. I'm sure people really cared about Rose. Like, what do you mean I'm sure? Who is this dude? I don't care if he's a priest. People need to know who my tia was. Somebody needs to give a proper eulogy to my aunt. People need to know there was always frijoles at my tia's house, man. The priest said, you feel so passionately, you say something. I said, Abba, Abba. I took a deep breath. Ode to a rose. Why did my tia die? Why did God take the one angel we still have living on this planet? I don't know why she died, but I promise everyone here, I'm not gonna let her death be in vain. I am going back to Loyola Marymount, and I'm gonna graduate in her honor, and I ask every one of you, do that thing that you know you're supposed to do. Dance that dance, sing that song, construct that poem, get your grades up, get into the college of your choice, graduate from the college of your dreams. If not for me and my tia, then for the people you most know and love. And then I said, I'd like to end this eulogy in the way my tia most remembered me by, and that is with a joke. And my family was like, no, 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 aquí no hace eso, Ernesto, Ernesto. I said, it's okay, my tia loved me for this. I said, how many roses does it take to make violets blue? I said, of all of us here today are violets, it only takes one. Rest in peace, tia. I love you. And it was silent like this. And my uncle was right there. He stood up clapping and crying. They all looked at him clapping and crying. And they all went, and I went, whoa. 
And in that moment, I captured for myself what Ms. Donna Huckabee had seen in me, that I was a leader. Now, I don't have time to tell you guys the whole story, but the short version is this. I worked my butt off. I got back into college. The last two semesters, I made the dean's list in honor of my tia. And on June 14th, 1994, I walked up into that stage, got my college degree with my name on it, looked out to the audience, and I said, Mom, Rose, I did it! I did it! And that is a feeling that each and every one of you wants to feel. The day you graduate from college, you will forever, for the rest of your life, be able to say, I'm a beautiful, powerful, educated person. And if you're like me, you'll always have a little ghetto inside of you. All right, did you guys have fun, man? Did you guys have a good time, good stuff, yeah? Yeah? All right, cool. For those of you who were inspired, I apologize again for those Esau students that understood most of it, but not all of it. I have one of these for you. If you want this, it's up to you. It has information on scholarships, the Hispanic Scholarship Fund. If you need money for college, you can apply to this website and get a scholarship. But I have some of these. If you want to stick around, I'll be up here in the front of the room. It's my parting gift to you. If you saw the movie Coach Carter, you've heard this quote. If you saw the movie Aquila the Bee, you've heard this quote. You probably haven't heard it quite like this. It's my parting gift to Bladensburg High School. It says simply this, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It's our light, not our darkness, which most frightens us. And that's not the way we think. The way we think is I'm afraid I might not be good enough. I'm afraid I might not be strong enough. I'm afraid I might not be smart enough. That's not what you're really afraid of. What you're really afraid of is how awesome and amazing you might actually be. We ask ourselves, who am I? It's a very Latino thing to say. Quien soy yo? No, 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 por favor, quien soy yo? Who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You're a child of God and you were put on this planet to make manifest that glory of God that's within you, to let your light shine. And as you let your light shine, you give permission to other people to do the same. As you are liberated from your fears, your presence automatically liberates others. So I just want to say Bladenburg High School, please continue to let your light shine, and thank you for letting me let my light shine. All right, you guys, thank you very much. I appreciate you.